wonderful to see you here again. And thank you so much. Again, you take so much of your personal time um, to chat with me both on and off screen. You've taught me so much and I am really grateful. Well, it's great, great, great to be with you again, Cindy. Always fun. I greatly appreciate it. And I don't know. I, I think that people are really enjoying having you on. You are back by popular demand and <laughs> uh, as always, and it's just, one can learn so much just listening to you. And, you know, some question I have, you'll spend the time to look up and answer and find it. And we go on the maps and it's fascinating to me to listen to you and watch you. And um, thank you. Thank you so very oh, much. Pleasure. Pleasure. And and I just before we get started today with another chat, um, just wanted to make mention as we were doing our research, people, there is so much out there on the internet. Um, we we'll perhaps have another discussion about, for the instance, the Battle of the North Inch. And I printed this out just to go over it at some point. We may not do this today. We may do it next time. At some point, this is an ongoing study that I've been doing that I will continue yeah. to talk about the North Inch. But I printed it out from Wikipedia because there's almost no correct information given in the Wikipedia. There might be little bits and pieces, but there's yeah. so incorrectly given there. People write books. We were speaking of this a moment ago. People can write a book. Anyone can write a book nowadays and Amazon will publish it for you. It does not mean that the information in these books is by any way or means accurate information at all. And so you really need to check who is writing this book. What credentials do these people have? Whom are they going to for to get the correct information? What documents are they using? Um, who have they been speaking with? So. As much as I am a learner, lifelong learner, and I am intrigued with all things Clan Hatton, Scotland, and learning the histories, I would by no means ever pretend that I was <laughs> smart enough or versed enough or educated enough to put together a book of my own. I do believe, however, that you, Philip, could be and would be that. <laughs> <laughs> and we well, have friends, the Graham McKenzie's of the world who has a wonderful book he put together. And there are people, but you really must check the credentials of people putting out books. And just because something is in print does not mean that it should be taken seriously. Um, and well, that might sound harsh, but I just want to put that out there. <laughs> well, I guess, it, yes. It, I mean, it, it it is on the one hand, the internet is a, is a huge boon because it gives you access to so much data and so many source materials. And actually the um, archive um, website is, is actually excellent with its scans of books and materials. So actually that's very good. But the thing to understand is that actually um, a lot of these things, they, they all have errors within them. So any historian that writes a book will have finished the book and find at the end of the book, it's published, and then they spot where the where the where the mistakes are, and um, and it's just it, it, it's inevitable. It's part of it, of history. Um, so actually, taking all sorts of different data and trying to make sense of it, because the other side is that you know which is the one you take as gospel, but in reality you have to meld them all together, um, and sometimes you need to actually make a fresh conclusion. Because actually all the information you've got may suggest a context which isn't actually represented in the accounts in each of those histories. So it's, it's I mean, I, I, I'm constantly finding myself correcting things. Um, and um, we just found something today, didn't we? We were looking at Kinrara and we were seeing that um, that Kinrara was, was giving the death of the Red Common and being killed by Robert the Bruce as... 1305 um but what we hadn't realized is that actually what kenrara was doing there is he was giving the church year date because the church year changed on the lady date 25th of march so it was calendar year 1306 
But in Kenrara, you'd think, well, he's made a mistake. But he hasn't made a mistake. He's just recording the air in a different way that we don't do now. Um, so, I didn't know about the Lady Day. And be, and that was their, in essence, yeah. new year. Yeah, yeah, that was that was that was sort of the old New Year's Day in it, in in essence. So, um, or Easter. Sometimes people would date things to Easter. I think um, again, I'm, I'm not an expert, but um, so that can throw a lot of people um, on year dates. But um, yeah, so it's and there's always fresh things appearing, you know, or or, or just the fact is there isn't anything fresh or new, but it's just that two people two bits of information have never been put together and by putting them together rather like a recipe for something you might eat or a chemical um thing or colors with artists you put two colors together you get a new color but until you put them together you didn't see the new color i know that you um you have been studying about the the two axes and i'm anxious to hear that real quick before we launch into that we did have a, a question not to put you on the spot um, okay. <laughs> now we had a comment and we, we do want you to comment. Please do comment below. We, we like people engaging. Um, it's, it really makes it fun for us and it's good. It's a conversation, but there was clarification on, um, clan Cameron having originally belonged to the clan Hatton Confederation many years prior, obviously prior to the Cameron and Macintosh feud, which went on for some 350 years. But is there anything you wanted to clarify for people of your knowledge of Clan Cameron being originally part of Clan Hatton? Yes, yeah, so, 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 so this is something which m m might appear to be um, a rather unexpected um, revelation. But I think the, the, um, the fact of Clan Cameron, and I'll come back to what Clan Cameron is or how, how it came about, um, having been part of or part of um, Clan Cameron, part of parts of the original Clan Hatton. Um, historians have been mentioning this um, for quite some hundreds of years. And the, the, the work of Graham Mackenzie, who wrote a, a, a book called Gillicatton's Posterity, and it was all about the Loch Harbour feud um, between the Camerons, the Macintoshes, the Macmillans, and he and the McGillanies. He lays it out very, very clearly, goes thoroughly through all the sources, and 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 makes a, a, the picture much clearer. But what what you've got is that Clan Cameron um, is in itself a, a, like a mini Clan Hatton. In origin, so it brought together some of the Clan Hatton clans, like the McGillanies, which were definitely part of Clan Hatton, um, the McMillans, there, the McMartins, um, uh, uh, and these families were melded in with another lineage to form Clan Cameron. And I think what happened is that a, I don't, I can't remember the name of the person or the or the date, but a. Um, a Cameron, in essence, is thought to have married the heiress of um, the McGillanies. So the Camerons of Strone on the river Lockie. I hope I'm getting this right, Cindy, but we can correct it if not. The McGillanies of Strone were, in, in essence, the most important um, bit that became Clan Cameron. So Clan Cameron, so the McGillanies of Strone became the Camerons of Strone. So they changed their name, in essence. Some of them kept that name, but it it it's quite complicated, but um, it, it explains a lot. And the, when you look at the geography, it makes a lot of sense um, because the Clan Hatton lands were slap bang exactly where um, the Camerons then take charge. And and it was that sort of feud between some of the male lineages of Clan Hatton, um, with the Macintoshes having inherited through the heiress Eva. That's that's when what led up to the Battle of the North Inch, where it was Clan Cameron or its parts, I and mean, Graham 
um, Mackenzie, I think, makes the point that it's actually effectively the Macmillans really leading that element at the Battle of North Inch against Clanhattan, led by the Macintoshes. So it, it it's quite complicated, but it's it's something that hasn't ever really been discussed too much um, between us. But I would love to connect. So if any Camerons are listening, any if there's a Shenahi of Clan Cameron um, or historian of Clan Cameron um that or, or, or the chief himself um would love to explore this in more more detail because i think it's uh it, it's a bit of forgotten history um but it actually shows that we we all had a common origin well thank you for that i did put you on the spot and so i'm going to make every attempt to contact the camerons and it would be what <laughs> to have you on with with um Maybe the Cameron Chief. We should all get um, Gilly Catton's posterity written by. Graham. I yeah, I think perhaps we, we we need to try and get Graham on with us. We we need to. I yeah I, uh, yeah. I think I think that so. Um, if, if if at some point Graham's listening to this, he'll he'll hear his name taken in vain. Um, <laughs> we're 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 on to you, Graham. We we're, we're going to get you on. I think that's what we're going to do. Yeah. So Graham message me or I'll, I'll track you down. I know how to get to you. So, we'll yeah. <laughs> so with that, um, let's go ahead and, and launch into this very fascinating and wild story about the axes with the McBains, which you have. Okay. And so. So it, it, it's quite possible. I'll, I'll, I'll completely lose the thread um, because it's really gets rather involved and complicated, but um, and I'll try. Um, but it, it 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 says something about it, it. What's interesting about this little tale is that it um, provides some context actually for the old history of Clan Hatton and the marriage of Eva to Angus Mackintosh, and or, or, and the setting of the Wars of Independence, the rise of Robert the Bruce the um, conflict with the commons in Badenoch and Loch Arbor, it, 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 that's the background context um, in which the McBains really emerged as an, as, a, as an identifiable separate element of Manhattan. Um, so first of all, you've got Bain Moore, the patriarch and founder of the clan that, that he gave his name to. And, and he had... Um, it, the, well, the farm manuscript, which we talked about, the farm manuscript, which itself we found has some errors, which are prov easily provable. So that's not um, complete gospel, but it it it, it it's um, otherwise uh, a rich source of data. But it says he had six sons, which described as pretty hardy fellows. I think that probably means they were pretty darn tough. <laughs> he didn't want to mess with them. Um, but the eldest of whom was um, Bain himself was the son of Mulmura, which anglicized as Milmore. And his his oldest son was called Milmore. Interestingly enough, the second son the farm manuscript gives for him was Gilpatrick. Or Gilipatrick, or Gilifadric. Um, you know, um so that's interesting because that is the name that is supposed to have been the father of Eva. The heiress of Clanhattan. People sometimes think that it might be Dougal Dahl that was her father. Um, others say it was actually Gil Gilipatrick, son of Dougal Dahl. So that's, but the Kinrara says it's her father was called Gilipatrick. So um that that that's quite interesting because that that the story was that Bain came in the marriage part, sort of household as it were the party that came with eva with her, her marriage to angus and and um and so in view of the fact that he named one of his sons after eva's father it suggests probably quite a close relationship um and if his oldest son and heir was called mulmura or milmore after his own father maybe gilipatrick was named after his wife's father but it suggests a connection anyway um in there somewhere Maybe yeah so but 
um, Momura, it was Mom M Momura MacBain, son of Bain, who killed the Red Common steward of Inverlochy. Now, Inverlochy Castle is only about, I don't know, a mile and a half directly south of Tor Castle, and Tor Castle being the castle of um, the captains of Clan Hatton, and in fact, the chief of Clan Hatton to this day is known as um, Macintosh of Macintosh Tor Castle. I think all Macintosh and Tor Castle, but he's got Tor Castle in his title still to this day. Um, so you can Tor Castle was on the um, on, on on the right bank of the River Lockie, um, on or on the northern side, if you look at the map. On the southern side, directly south, was um, was was Inverlochy Castle. So you can see the Commons and and Clanhattan were really close, and the River Lockie was probably a a, a, a border for them all, really, and. Um, and and that's why there was so much conflict um, between the Macintoshes and the Commons and Momura killing the Red Commons, um, Stuart and Inverlochy, all the conflict there. So it actually says here that that in, in the Kinraro manuscript that Eva married Angus Macintosh in 1291. The Farm manuscript and the McBain history is that Bain came with Eva with her marriage party. The far manuscript says that um, that in 1292, Bain Moore took protection of Angus Macintosh for himself and his successors. So it, it sort of suggests that he came un, under that, under the wing of the Macintoshes, having come with Eva. Uh, that makes sense. So that gives us a date. Now, what happened in 1292? Is um, that is that is when um, Bailey, John Balliol became King of Scotland. So it's a it's it's a sort of critical time in the history of Scotland there, and then you've got this run up to a whole lot of um, uh, of conflict, um, and um, you know, for instance, you've got the the the, the Battle of um, Dunbar in twelve ninety six. Which the the Scots lost. You've got twelve ninety seven, the the Battle of Stirling Bridge, which of course was that great victory, um, uh, uh, and um, made William Wallace so famous. Um, then you've got the Battle of Falkirk, when which was lost in twelve ninety eight. It's running up, you know, through to the time. You're still some time from 1306 when the Red Common was killed by Bruce. Bruce was crowned at Schoon on Lady Day, 1306. So it was like New so, Year's Day. So New Year's Day. One yes, new, new day, new year, new start, new <laughs> history. After the Red Common was killed. Yeah, so very, very soon after that. So, um, so Mumura was killed the Red Common steward sometime before 1306. So we can't tell when. And um, I haven't yet found a reference that would tell me who that steward was. So, um, but I, I, I maybe we'll track it down sometime. But then um, Mumura or Milmore MacBain had two of his sons. He had, he had four sons. Um, two of his sons, Milmore Og, which means Milmore the Younger, and Farquhar Fair. <laughs> he must have been quite a handsome chap. Um, or maybe maybe he was called, it, it, probably Fair, actually Fair. Uh, he might have actually been called Farquhar Ban in Gaelic, so, uh, because he might have been, or Farquhar Ban, uh, meaning Fair, as in Fair Head or Fair of Face. Um, but he's just remembered here in the far manuscript as Farquhar Fair. Uh, um, not to interrupt you, but real quick, yeah. I find this fascinating reading through the Kinrara. I don't know if it's because back then people didn't have surnames yet and they were trying to differentiate, but they go into great, great detail to describe what a person looks like all throughout the Kinrara. 
they they yep. they do it, whether you were a fair whether you were stout uh, yep. your your stature everything so yep. I didn't mean to interrupt you, but I found yeah, no, they they give lots of nicknames. So actually, describes that you know how how somebody looked, whether they were tall, whether they were short, whether they were you know dark of in in face or fair of face or you know light skinned or 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 ruddy or red faced or you know the, these were lots of nicknames came from. Um, so the the the, the red common had two other servants called Patton and Kesson. Funny name, and they're described as gossips. And and by that they they were people that were spreading false accusations against the McBains, and um, uh, um, and they were they were because the McBains were so attached to Macintosh, and obviously with Macintosh with the Bruces, that that they made a great effort to run down the McBains and um, and and divide them from their friends. So they spread nasty stories um to their friends and family and relations and um and and tried to sort of split up uh, these people so what they did <laughs> it's, got, it's got complicated so from lock locky if you come down the great glen there's you 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 come beyond loch ness um and we talked about loch Oy, and you come down loch locky and then the river Lochy goes down from Loch Lochy down to Loch Heel and Fort William. Okay, so yeah, you've got your map, which is brilliant. So, um, coming into the bottom of Loch Lochy, uh, the water's coming in from Loch Arke from the west, and that and Eva brought with her the inheritance of Glenloy and Loch Arke. And um and 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 if you come down from Loch Lochy, down the river Lochy, otherwise known as the water of Lochy, you first of all you pass Glen Loy, so the river Loy comes into the river Lochy around Strone. Okay, and that's about halfway between the bottom of Loch Lochy and Lochiel. So um, Tor Castle is halfway between Strone and Fort William. So we know that, that therefore Glen Loy and those lands included Tor Castle. So it was following the line of the River Lochie. So what these dastardly commons were doing, Patton and Kesson and, and the commons, to to try and create division between the McBains and their friends and the Macintoshes and everybody is that they apparently took some fish that were were had been had been um, caught by the fishermen of the commons in the water of Lochy, as it says, on the river Lochy, to some country people's houses at night, and then unbeknownst to these people and then in the morning they go searching for fish they claim to have been that they claim were stolen from them oh. and um that they claim that they were stolen out of the red cummins kitchen and by that they mean the fishery you know the river lucky and um and so they actually put to death some of these friends of the mcbains oh um God. for stealing fish that had basically been planted on them so you know this, this 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 is this is pretty um strong stuff, and at the time the Red Common was the Justicia of Loch Arbor. So um, uh, Milmore Og and Farquhar Fair um got wind of all of this, found out how this trick was done. So they decided they 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 met up or they bumped into or however with the two commons um. Uh, servants Patton and Kesson who'd been spreading ghastly sort of rumours and disunity and creating this trouble for their friends. And so Farquhar apparently said to Milmore, basically, let's, um, these people killed our friends with treachery um, and let's go and um, kill these two and get revenge. So they did. 
so they they uh, it seems that they each had their own enemy Kesson was the great sort of um enemy of Milmore Og it seems and Patton um was the the sort of man who'd spread rumors against his brother Farquhar so they they did a did a deal that Milmore would kill um uh Patton and um and and his brother Farquhar would kill Kesson so Milmore or his, in his Gaelic Mormura um killed um uh Patton and um and then you know Farquhar was was busy trying to sort out Kesson Milmore came behind Kesson um and struck his axe furiously apparently um and that must have been some sort of distraction because while he was hitting the axe and the deal was that he wouldn't kill this man that was Farquhar's job to kill Kesson so he was just Mil Milmore was hitting the axe and then finally Farquhar slew him and then Milmore um said carried his axe on the point of his own Kesson's axe um and it seems that what happened is that he'd been striking the axe so hard um that it seemed the two axes seemed to have stuck together now when they came to um to Macintosh this would have been Angus Macintosh these axes formed the shape of a cross or according to Macintosh you know they did um and he carried them on his shoulders now I I was thinking how could two axes form the shape of a cross how does this happen if one is stuck into the other uh, and I I'm rather thinking they might have been something akin to a lojave axe because oh. they're very long and you could get one hooked over the bottom of the other in some way that um could form uh, a, a cross so that's that's my hunch but it may be completely wrong um but it was that Macintosh said you know what well, what on earth have you got on your shoulders and he explained that he had his axe which had got caught up with Kesson's axe and and it was said that from that day on that that they were known as um the the tribe bane the great um of the cross um and or the kindred of bane um big bane of the cross so quite quite interesting but it, it turned out that then the the red common was using were using all sorts of stratagems they call them to undo bane's children and his descendants and all their friends so he came out of loch Arbor and went to um riven which on a map people will find spelt as ruth ven but it's pronounced as Riven, and it's where the barracks is on a on a on an old mound by King Usi. It's just south of King Usi, um, and up near Badenoch, and that's where the Macintoshes were as well. And north of there was Rothimercus. Um, and the the Kinrara manuscript talks about Angus and Eva coming out of Loch Arbor in 1308 and dwelling in Rothimercus. And before that, they lived in Glenloy. So as I say, Glenloy is between um, Loch Arkeg and Loch Heel. And Glenloy and the River Loy come down to meet the River Lochy at Strong, roughly around that point. And um, so that gives you a sort of geographic location of where the McBains were living. They were clearly living around Glenloy near Macintosh, on on that river somewhere. Um, but that's not a bad bit of locating. Um, so that's what they, they took them up to um, Riven in, in oh Badenoch. Wow. And, you know, that makes sense. And looking at it on the map, you know, I've explored that part of Scotland and stayed there nearly every year for the last 20 years. And I've stayed at the Glengarry House Hotel on Loch Oig, I've driven up and down that road there that goes out to, uh, well, eventually Illindonan Castles right in there, um, and then over the bridge to Sky. And I didn't know 
anything about this history. I hadn't really studied it. So now when yeah. I go up there, I'm going back to these general places just to have look around, just just because there this is a lot of history from Clan Hat. It is. And and actually if you think about it, so um the Rebains killed the Red Common steward of Inverlochy. So sometime between 1306. Um, they probably followed soon after Macintosh up to Badenot. Um, 1306, Robert the Bruce Crown, 25th of March, up in uh, at Schoon. Um, Angus and Eva move out of Glenloy in 1308 and go up to Rothamercus. Now, you have to ask yourself, what's going on then? Well, what was going on is between 1306 to 1314, that was the sort of wars of Robert the Bruce ending with the Battle of Bannockburn um, on 24th of June 1314. And at that battle, the Red Commons' son and successor, another John um, Common, he was killed at their battle at Bannockburn. So um, there's so much going on at that time. It, it's thought that between 1306, 1307, when um, King Edward came into Scotland. He was, of course, you know, not very happy about the fact that Robert the Bruce had been declared King of Scots. It's thought that actually the Bruce might have been in the Isles somewhere and being protected by uh, by the Lord of the Isles there. So I, I think that um, possibly Loch Harbour was a difficult place to be at that time. And the Commons would still have been around Bruce wasn't entirely in charge, and therefore they probably thought going up to Badenoch was safer for them. But pure conjecture, Cindy, so it may be completely incorrect, but I suspect they thought, let's consolidate around here. It's probably a bit safer, and um, we can hold ourselves safely here while mayhem is going on down in Loch Harbour. That's probably the context of it, because... And the other thing to remember is that the Red Commons' wife was Joan de Valence. Now, Joan de Valence was the daughter of William de Valence, the Earl of Pembroke. And the Red Commons' brother in law, therefore, Joan's brother, was Aimer de Valence, Earl of Pembroke. And anyone who's watched um, uh, Outlaw King uh, about Robert the Bruce. Um, they'll meet Aimer de Valence, who was the hard, um, tough military commander as he was in Scotland. And he was the sort of serious soldier shown in that film against Edward II, who was you know, obviously reflected as a pretty hopeless character, um, which he was. And um, But that, that close connection between de Valence and the commons um, is quite interesting. So... It would have meant that when the Red Common was killed, his son and successor was the nephew of the of, of King Edward's military commander in Scotland. Yes, the Earl of Pembroke. Yeah, the Earl of Pembroke, and uh, and he he of course also was uh, was at Bannockburn. So it, it's that sort of bigger context that was going on at that time, but it was a critical moment when really, Clanhattan, in its new form led by Macintosh as a result of marrying Eva, fighting alongside Robert the Bruce, being at Bannockburn, and no doubt the other battles. All of this is going on at the time. You've also got to understand that Angus Macintosh's mother was Maura, the daughter of Angus Og, Lord of the Isles. And his uncle, therefore, was John of Isla, Lord of the Isles. So that that connection with the Lord of the Isles, Robert the Bruce, you know, it just it puts things into more of a historical con context that might make sense of some of the movements and what was going on. And sure enough, um, later on, Angus's son is reconfirmed in his lands in Loch Arkeg and Glen Loy and, and down in Loch Arbor by the Lord of the Isles, his own relation. Because the Conrara just mentions a retreat to Rothy Market, and um, it doesn't exactly say why. 
But when you put, you know, all of these pieces together and look at it on the map, this must have been the reasons why. Um, and then for, uh, we'll save the chat for another day, but then when they retreated um, and left Tor Castle, this is when the Camerons came and moved in everybody. So here's just a, yes. 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 For the, a future conversation when we when we get to some of that feud that went on for some 350 years the longest running feud yeah. in scotland and also yeah. the kings of scotland kept getting involved because this feud was so bad that at times it involved half or more of scotland taking one side or another and i could only imagine that perhaps a king would want this to put this to bed and, and to stop this feuding because first of all who wants that kind of ruck, ruckus with over half of your country but then you'd have one has to wonder um could one of these highland clans be strong enough to maybe have more support than the crown itself i don't know that's just my interjection of my curiosities but um but this is this is when they uh, this um, retreat to rothy marcus um the camerons came into lock harbor and tor castle and over that 350 years again we won't we don't have to get into it or you can comment yeah. on it we'll for another day the camerons only as far as i can tell from the kenrara they only won one battle but they still never left the area. No, because the, the the key thing is it, it doesn't matter how many how many deeds you have um, from the king or anyone else telling you, telling everyone that you are the lords of a particular land. Uh, if somebody else is occupying it, well, um, uh, what do they? What's the old phrase? Um, possession is nine tenths of the law. <laughs> and it was, and uh, that <laughs> finally ended. In 1666, yeah, yeah, uh, with the Camerons yeah. being told to pay to pay restitution, yeah. as it were, and, 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 they, and we've been great friends with them ever since. And, <laughs> and actually, we fought alongside them. And and the McBains are a very prominent and important branch of the McBains, the McBains of Faley, from whom the McBains of Tamartin branched off. The McBains in, of Faley around you know prior to the um, uh, 45 rising um, in the 1700s, the, uh, an heiress of um, one of the, the heads of Faley married two prominent Camerons, one of whom was Cameron of Strone, oh. all the way down on the River Lockie. So it sort of puts another connection and there have been other McBain Cameron marriages um, and there are the, the, the uh, down in that area and McBain's living back there again as a result so it's quite quite interesting um, and one of the McBain's in early time was also found back in Inverlochy itself signing um, and witnessing a um, uh, uh, um, some 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 deed or grant or I, I can't remember what it is we have to come back to it another time but I remember mentioning that at the inauguration of our chief in 2022 but it, it it's incredibly involved incredibly complicated but actually if you look at the map um you can see how it makes some sense um but how how strategically important Loch Arbor was um but also Badenoch but the lands of Badenoch were richer you know, if you're going to have land, that's a richer place to have, you know, better place to have your 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 land. Even better up around Inverness, where Macintosh had rich lands in Petty and Connage and all up there. That that was, uh, you know, where where much more wealth could be had. Yes, well, the Macintoshes were eventually um, gifted the land at Moy in 1336, prior yes. to and reserved for the. Yeah. Beautiful countryside, and I love yeah. Lock Harbour. Um, and you can go and stay at Inverlochy Castle. I stayed there two years ago, we did. And um, it was rather haunting and to go up and down the stairwells. And, um, you know, it's probably not the ancient castle. Very little of it remains. But um, 
it's a uh, very beautiful countryside all of it it's stunning yeah. but but, but you, you didn't you didn't see the ghost of the red common steward wandering around the grounds looking for the mcbains did yeah. you <laughs> however, however i took a little a little trip down the stair my husband said to me you know maybe that's maybe that right, the common yes common. <laughs> so. the commons were keeping an eye on you <laughs> yes. what's this macintosh doing here <laughs> maybe we should all avoid in Veloki. <laughs> yes but it is, <laughs> it is beautiful so i would encourage yeah. anyone to go up into that area and it's really not by car too far um i'm going to make a check of it now that we have some more of the map we've gone over and um and take some photographs and some pictures later this year and yeah. share with everyone. So <laughs> Philip, thank you Great. once again for all of your time and and all of the history that you have. But it's not only just that, it's just you being able to know where to go to find things, to do this research about the story about the axis, the two axes. Um and what happened with that, and that that is a, a true story. Um, so oftentimes- I'm sure story. it is a true story. I think it's it's such an unusual, the detail is so unusual and so specific. Uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm absolutely convinced this, you, 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 wouldn't, you wouldn't think to make up such a story. So it must've been a story passed down through oral tradition, but where far got it from? That's the key. Was it written down in one of the lost sources of the Kinrara manuscript. And I suspect that that is what happened, is that actually Far record, wrote this down and it was in one of the source documents that Kinrara used. I think that's what's happened. And that the genealogies were in one of those as well. And, and that nothing else really makes a lot of sense, to be honest. It's so lucky that it survived. Yeah, yes. And I think we've seen it a couple of other places and so, and so to me that, um, you know, in my mind's eye, I would think that that means that, yes, this was something that really happened. And yeah, yeah, so, yeah. wonderful, wonderful, brilliant. Lovely. Thanks. Great to be with you again. And you take <laughs> care, Cindy. You as well, Philip. Thank you so much. Philip Beddoes, yes. Clan Shenahi or Clan McBain. And that's a Gaelic word I learned to pronounce correctly this month. I'll make <laughs> one each month and try to do it. So <laughs> we so appreciate you and your time. Thank you so much, Philip. Thank well, you. thank you. And we'll Bye. see you again. Bye for now.